Welcome to worship at Wild Rose United Church, where we seek to embody the beloved community of Jesus through radical welcoming, progressive theology, and social justice. I have the great honor and privilege of being able to introduce Cheryl Gagnon Gray Eyes. Uh, Cheryl is a proud Cree woman of the Muskeg Lake Cree Nation in Saskatchewan, Treaty 7. And uh, she now lives, oh, see, sorry, Treaty 6. And <laughs> she now lives in Calgary and has since 1993. Um, which is Treaty 7. Um, yeah, I don't know why I'm getting those mix, mixed up. Anyway, she, is, uh, she was the first um, Indigenous uh, woman uh, to lead, well, she was the first woman uh, to lead a political party in Canada, which was with the Green Party. And um, she has uh, two children. One uh, we know quite well, Chantal. Uh, Chantal's been here to share stories and and sing and drum with us here at Wild Rose, so um, we all think of her very lovingly. She's also the uh, Kokum, or grandmother, to five lovely grandchildren. Um, Cheryl's done many uh, wonderful things, I think, has a very diverse background. She's worked for the CBC, she's worked at the University of Calgary, and um, was the, the administrative coordinator of the um, um, Native Center there. and. Um, she, she also has her own company and she provides um, sharing with indigenous stories and, and uh, protocols, indigenous protocols, land acknowledgements, prayers, ceremonies, uh, cultural teachings and stories. Now she is an indigenous storyteller and performer and she's a member of the Storytellers of Canada and Storytelling Alberta. So I'm so very excited um, I, I'd just like to just quickly introduce our um, indigenous, our uh, right relation circle before I introduce, finish introducing Cheryl. Um, we have Val Giorgini um, and uh, Corinne Salajanu, uh, Catherine Fisher, and Murray Spear and myself. And the other people who've been very instrumental in helping in today's service are our worship team here at Wild Rose. So, um, Welcome, Cheryl Tanse. Thank you so much for that lovely introduction. Um, my tax name is Cheryl Shanyo Gray Eyes. I was gifted with a beautiful name in the Cree Sweat Lodge. My Cree name is Nanantawe Esquayo Yahuka Pimotate. I am a healing woman who walks far. My reserve, as mentioned, is Treaty 6. Muskeg Lake is about halfway between Saskatoon and Prince Albert. And uh, that's my reserve, and that's my home reserve. Um, um, I have a survivor of a survivor. My mother went to St. Michael's Residential School. So I wish to acknowledge the people of the land that I'm from, Treaty 6. But I also wish to acknowledge that we are on the land of the Treaty 7 people here in Calgary what is known as Mokinstis, which means elbow in Blackfoot. I wish to honor the peoples of the Blackfoot Confederacy, Bigani, Siksika, and Gainai. I wish to honor the Dene people from Tutsuna, the Stony Nakoda people from Morley, Chiniki, Bearspaw, and Wesley First Nation. Here in Calgary, we are members of the Métis Nation of Alberta, and Calgary is located in Region 3 of the Métis Nation of Alberta. I acknowledge the people who have been here for millennia, and for those of us who now call Calgary our home, are blessed to have this wonderful city, this wonderful space, this beautiful land that has been kept so sacred by the original peoples here. In my way, I'd like to honor you with a Cree song. In Cree, we say welcome as tsanse. In um, Blackfoot, we say oki. So let's try this. Tsanse. Oki. Abamthawich. Danitada. Buju. How's going? Okay, good. You're, you're here. This is good. So I wish to honor you with a Cree welcome song 
This song was written by Joseph Nataway of Treaty 6. His reserve is, must, is a Sturgeon River Reserve. And he wrote this song with his sister. Mia Sin means beautiful in Cree. And I wish to sing this to honor each and every one of you who have come here, who are streaming in, who are sharing with us this sacred time of worship and glory. And also to wish a very happy Father's Day to all those who are fathers, are about to be fathers, have been fathers, and to those who have passed. I lost my dad in 2000, so I'm very grateful and I honor the spirit and ask him to join us in spirit this way. Mi Sin, I sing in three rounds, not like the standard four rounds, which honors the teachings of the medicine wheel, but three rounds with purpose and intent to include each and every one of you in this celebration of spirit and life and worship. This is Mia Sin, the Cree welcome song. Mia Sin, Mia Sin, Asemina, Asemina. E peta kote giwano magan o ta o ma kita skino mia sen mia sen a Welcome to your beautiful spirits. Thank you. Hi, hi. been lit reminds us of your sacred fire. May the smoke from this flame carry our prayers to you. We gather before you to offer you praise. Your great heart beats within us like the beat of drums. May we feel your presence all around us. Come let us worship with song and joy. Good morning. 
My name is Linda Ellis. As you can see, Murray Spear is not with us today. He's at a general council meeting. And as you also know, I never stand up here to do my part, but I thought today I'd just get out of the way and let Cheryl and her crew have the best space in the sanctuary this morning. Along with Cheryl and the Right Relations team, we also have Karen Nell Bennett, Dan Somerville, Alice Cockcroft, Diane McKenzie, Katie Black, and Bill Aiken helping deliver the service. And also, of course, our ushers, our counters, and the lovely choir behind me. Let us pray. Beloved Creator, be with us as we walk the path of reconciliation. Part of that walk involves understanding. Help us open our eyes, ears, and hearts as we listen to the stories and wisdom Cheryl brings to us this morning. Let us also remember that it is Father's Day. So let us remember the fathers who are here, those who are absent, and also those who help fill the void when fathers aren't present. Grandfathers, uncles, brothers, cousins, teachers, pastors, coaches, and even sometimes the women in families. Let us all open our eyes, ears, hearts, minds, and souls and enjoy this time this morning together. Amen. So the peace candle is a tradition that has been passed around for many years. And the one that we have here right now in the sanctuary is from Murray Spears' former church in Banff, Rundle United. I'm just gonna light this. I had to get a fresh candle this morning because the other one had died. As we light this candle, let us remember that peace is a state when no one has too much and no one has too little. We all have what we need and can enjoy each other without conflict. We have little bundles of peace candles here in a basket to my right. If you are traveling to another church or you're visiting us from another church and you would like to take a peace candle with you from us, please do. Or if you just feel in your heart you need to have a peace candle at home, Feel free to take them. Nobody monitors, and we can make more packages. And now, Dan and Karen will lead us in a hymn, Open My Eyes That I May See, Stand If You Are Able.
Hello, it's me again. I just wish to acknowledge this gift of tobacco that was gifted to me. In our way, when we are gifted tobacco, it is from the gifter's heart to the person being gifted to creator. And it creates a sacred covenant that shows you are coming with good and right intent. It is a sacred covenant that's actually longer lasting than a mortgage. So thank you very much. I appreciate that. <laughs> And with gratitude and with humility, I accept this tobacco in a good way. Thank you. This song I wish to share this morning, especially for the children and for the child in each and every one of us, is known as the Chickadee Song. And it was written by my daughter, Chantel, the beautiful and talented pink-haired daughter of mine. And uh, it's kind of neat because... Um, she wrote this song a number of years ago because children just love to sing and drum with Chantal. And she spends a lot of time in Catholic schools, public schools, charter schools, in the public, at the library, teaching these songs and engaging with the children. And it's uh, very appropriate, I think, that it is the chickadee song because it honors that chickadee. Or she says, you know, the one that's always ordering hamburgers at, at, geez, at McDonald's, cheeseburger. Cheeseburger, that's what they sound like. Cheeseburger. So I always get a kick out of that. And the kids get that because they like cheeseburgers too. <laughs> and now Calgary has chosen its bird. And its new bird that will be representing the city is the, uh, the black-headed chickadee. So it's very appropriate that we're going to be singing this song and sharing this song in a good way. And it's a very good song, and I'll do a kind of a call and response so that you can sing back to me, because it's really not that difficult. Okay, we'll do it without the drum first. Okay. Happy yo-ho-ho. Happy yo-ho-ho. Happy yo-ho-ho. Happy yo-ho-ho. So that's the first verse. And the second verse is... Way a ho. Way a ho. Way a ho. Way a ho. Easy peasy, easy like pie. Now I'll add a bit of drum in here just so you have a good beat and you can dance to it, okay? <laughs> Happy yo ho ho. Happy yo ho ho. Happy yo ho ho. Happy yo ho ho. We'll do that again. Ready? Happy yo ho ho. Happy yo ho ho. Happy yo ho ho. Happy yo ho ho. Way a ho. Way a ho. Way a ho. Way a ho. Let's cheer up this chickadee by speeding it up just a little bit. Ready? Happy yo ho ho. Happy yo ho ho. Happy yo ho ho. Happy yo ho ho. Way a ho. Way a ho. Way. Way a ho. 
happy oh ho ho 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 way ya 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 ho happy yo ho 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 ho cheese burger cheese burger cheese burger cheese burger <laughs> Yee, hi 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 here's to all those chickadees out there and the new ones hey thank you hi hi <laughs>
A story about two sons. There was a man with two sons. The younger son said to his father, Father, give me now my share of what's coming to me. This was a great insult to the father, for he would not have been done until the father had crossed over to death. But the father, who was good-hearted and loved his sons, divided all he had with his two sons anyway. Not many days later, the younger son took a share and went far away to another land. He began to spend it all on wild living and soon had nothing left. The time came when there was not enough food in the land for everyone, and he found himself poor and hungry. So he went to work for a rancher who had sent him out to feed the pigs. He became so hungry that he wanted to eat the husks he was feeding to the pigs, but no one would even give him a meal. Soon the younger son came back to his right mind and said to himself, look, here I am naked and starving, but the servants who work for my father are all well fed. I am going back to humble myself to my father. I will tell him that I have dishonored both him and the spirit world above, and I am no longer worthy to be called his son. I will ask him just to let me be a hired servant to work in his lands. When he made up his mind and he began to go home, while he was still far away, his father saw him walking. The father's heart opened wide and he ran to his son and threw his arms around him and kissed him. The son said, Father, I have failed the spirit world above and you. I am not worthy to be called your son. But the father ignored his son's words, turned to his servants and said, go find my best regalia and put it on him. Give him a headdress of feathers for his head and new moccasins for his feet. Go get the fattest calf and prepare a great feast for a celebration. This is my son. He was lost but I have found him. He was dead to me, but now he is alive. Then they all began to feast, sing, and dance. Hearing this, the older brother became very angry and refused to go into the lodge. The father saw him brooding outside, so he went to him and urged him to come in. The older son said to his father, Why can you not see? I have worked hard for you all my life and done all that you have asked of me. But you have not even given me one small goat to have a feast with my friends. But then, when this son of yours, who wasted all you gave him on sexual favors with women, comes home, you kill the fattest calf for him. The father looked kindly into his older son's face. My son, he said, you are always close to my heart, and everything I have is yours. But it is a good thing for us to celebrate with glad hearts, for your brother was dead, but now is alive. He was lost, but now we have found him. Scripture is our song for the journey. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you for your kindness to, willing, to be willing to listen to what I have to share today. As I mentioned, I've lost my father, and uh, my children lost their father very young. Um, so we've had to be both mother and father, both my daughter and I, as single parents. But we honor the joys and the gifts that come from our fathers, for we would not be here without our fathers. Our mothers give us life. Our fathers give us guidance. Our mothers nurture us and love us. 
our fathers show us how to be proud and to be happy about who we are. Within the indigenous community, the man and the woman walk together on that path. Neither one is higher or lower than the other, but they work together as a couple to guide their family, as members of the community, to guide the community and to help in a good way, to be able to combine their efforts to make life better for their children, their grandchildren and great-grandchildren. When we make decisions in the indigenous way of being, we always consider seven generations back. What will our fathers and mothers, our grandfathers and grandmothers, our great-grandmothers and great-grandfathers think of these decisions that we're making today? Are we making good decisions to honor those who have come before? For when we are born on this planet, it's not that we have rights, we have obligations. We have obligations to the past and those who have come before. And we also have obligations to seven generations in the future for our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren, and those yet to be born. So it is honoring both what has come before and what is yet to be. And when we're at this point of making decisions and choices for ourselves, for our families, for our communities, for our nation. We must also consider the seven sacred teachings. Courage, honesty, humility, love, respect, truth, and wisdom are the choices that we're making honoring those sacred teachings? Are they honoring those who have come before? Are they honoring those that are yet to be born? And when we make decisions based on those criteria, we make better choices. Yes, we make mistakes, and the Creator's gifts to us, by the way, just so you know. And sometimes it's kind of hard to be grateful for those mistakes. <laughs> Thank you, Creator, for blessings received. But it's good to be grateful and recognize the teachings because we learn far more from the stuff we do wrong than from the stuff we do right. You don't forget a really good lesson. And I think that is the gifts of fathers is they help us to pause and think and be present and ask the hard questions. I remember asking my dad all kinds of questions. I remember asking my mom all kinds of questions. Go ask your dad. <laughs> my dad it was a pushover. Whenever we wanted something, we'd go ask dad first, right? Because mom was going to say no. <laughs> and our dads loved us. And I miss my father. But I feel his presence with me. Especially when I was blessed with two beautiful children. And now I have five grandchildren. And those are the greatest blessings from Creator. And for me, it's about showing true love. And it's about being present and having that balance in our lives. Mothers and fathers give us that balance. They are our roots, holding us to the ground so that we walk upon our beautiful Mother Earth in a good way but they are also our dreams. And we are a continuation of their dreams and their visions. And for all of those ancestors and grandfathers and grandfathers who've come before, that's what we are. We are a continuation of those dreams. How do you make Cree grandparent potatoes? <laughs> you cook them, that's grandma, and you mush them, that's grandpa. So you make Cree grandparent potatoes by you cook them and you mush them. And I am grateful to be a cook them. And I honor all those mushums out there <laughs> on this special day. I want to share a song with you today that brings together the teachings of the medicine wheel. Much like my drum is divided into four. It is that sense of balance 
that we seek each and every day. For life is a journey. It's not a destination. And it's how we walk upon the Mother Earth that gifts us. The four directions are like the four stands of a table, the four legs on a table. When we have that four corners, it balances that table. It keeps us steady, walking steadily forward in a good way. So I wish to sing a song with you today and to teach you a song known as a Four Directions song. It's also known as the Four Winds song. And I have uh, learned it in that way. And yes, you can find it on YouTube under the Cherokee Morning Song. So you can learn it that way as well. But I learned it as the Four Directions of honoring that sacred balance of the medicine wheel. That, that balance between our mind and our heart, our body and our spirit. It is something that we strive for every day when we wake up. And I'll just give you a little tip. If you wake up in the morning with gratitude, it colors your whole day. Thank you, Creator. I'm on the right side of the lawn. Yay. <laughs> It's good to be grateful when you first wake up. And it's easy to be grateful when you sink into that nice, soft, cushy bed at night. Thank you, Creator, for blessings received. So focus on gratitude, and it'll help you walk on that red road in a good and balanced way. Winde Yahoo honors those four directions. The north, closest to Creator. The south, the healing warm winds of the south, the east, the rising sun, the woman, the west with the grandfathers, I think, of the setting sun and the mountains to our west, that strength of the male, that beauty and brightness of the female. So it honors all four directions of the medicine wheel. And it's got a good beat, and you can dance to it. This should be pretty easy to learn. I'm glad they put the, the uh, words up there so you can follow along. I'm going to be singing four rounds, and at the end we'll have the fancy ending, just so you're warned ahead of time. <laughs> so you're going, what's she doing now? <laughs> Do this in a good way. When all the backup I can get singers and non-singers that's a okay ready when they
Well, first let me say, from the bottom of my heart, and from everybody else that's here, I loved your message. Thank you, Cheryl, for your wisdom. And I really hope that we all keep in mind what you shared with us this morning when we are stepping forward and making decisions in life. There'll be a lot less things to apologize for, but we will make mistakes and we will try to be grateful for them. God knows up here I make a few, so. When we pray together in community, the concerns of each of us, spoken or unspoken, are shared by all of us. Let us pray. Beloved Creator, there are moments when we struggle to be kind to each other and ourselves, especially during these stressful times. Be with us and help guide us to see each other's point of view. Give us strength to be patient and understanding with others and ourselves. We may forget that kindness shared with others makes all of us stronger. May your loving presence in our lives remind us to show compassion. As I watched the news this morning before coming to the church, I watched the images from Ukraine. I saw news of flooding in India and Bangladesh. I saw again aftermaths of fires, both wildfires and in homes here in Calgary. I saw the news of a 15th homicide in our city. It seems that every time we turn around, there's something that starts to break our hearts. This is a hard time. As we're slowly coming out of this pandemic, there's a lot of people who are stressed, anxious, angry, lost, confused, and not sure where we're going. The economy is also causing issues for people, for people who don't have much Putting gas in their car and food on their table is now an extreme hardship. There are refugees coming to our country who do not have a place to live. There's an awful lot of work that we need to do out in the world and in the community around this church. This morning, we need to pray especially for a couple of women in our own community. Hazel and her daughter, Caitlin. Caitlin, who has a tumor in her frontal lobe, and Hazel, who is struggling to deal with the reality of her child. She's 22, but she's still a child who is ill. Hazel and Caitlin need our love and support. And there's probably others out there who are also in need of our love, support, and prayers. Let us now, in a moment of silence, name all of those who are in our hearts. As with all things, name to unnamed, we trust in your goodness and wisdom and rest easy in your arms of compassion, creator. Amen. We gather these in all of our prayers, thankful that we may turn to you as to a grandmother or grandfather who watches over us and pray together as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I really like the picture that Dawn put up for announcements. <laughs>
and the megaphone is just my voice. I got it. Okay, not a problem. There's a lot going on. So, next Sunday, we have our stampede breakfast before the service. So the stampede people will be here at 8 o'clock getting things set up, and we're going to serve breakfast between 9 and 10. Oh, and thank you, Corinne, for making sure I have appropriate graphics to go along with my announcements. Uh, on Wednesday night, wonderful Wellness Wednesday, a very familiar face, Linda Hunter, will be online with the Wellness Hub talking about spiritual wellness from 7 to 9 p.m. So uh, you can contact Corinne to become a part of that. And um, if Linda's watching this morning, I'm going to reach out to her to perhaps invite her to come and share with us on a Sunday in July. And I'm also hoping to gently arm to Cheryl to come back as well, and David Lurie. And in the sanctuary right now, Claude Mathieu is with us, and he's going to come and talk on July 10th for me. So uh, I have a little praise series coming, starting while Marie's away for six Sundays, so P-R-A-I-S-E. And each Sunday, the letter will represent what we're talking about today. For example, for July 10th with Claude, he is willing to share his journey through the mental health care system for resilience. And we're going to have random acts of kindness that day as a focus. I want to have an uplifting series to help bring some positive aspects back to our lives as we come out of this pandemic. Now, the Stampede Breakfast just doesn't happen all by its lonesome. Things don't magically take place. So Don McIntosh, who's sitting up in the choir loft right now, will be in Wild Rose Hall after the service with volunteer sign-up sheets. Everybody remember those? We used to pass them around the sanctuary when we were all together. So that's really important uh, to do. And uh, another special announcement about next week, because we had our board meeting on Tuesday. Masking will become optional starting next Sunday. You're welcome to wear them if you want, but you don't have to anymore. And uh, we may have an issue next Sunday with the ability to deliver a live stream and put a recording onto YouTube. Uh, we have a slight staffing issue that we're going to try and sort out this week. So if you really want to see what's happening on our Yahoo Sunday, I think you're going to actually have to show up in person. And plus, it's kind of hard to eat pancakes virtually. Well, you can make them at home, but let's face it, those stampede people, those batter boys, they make the best pancakes. So come and join us for a little celebration next Sunday, and then come visit with us uh, in the weeks to come. Now, after the service today, we will have coffee and some cookies and stuff as we've have our post-coffee time again after services. However, it came close to not happening today because we didn't really have volunteers. But between Wendy and I, we pulled a rabbit out of a hat and we were able to put it together. So we're gonna start putting out to call online for volunteers for services and for post-service fellowship because we really want to start coming back together as a community, seeing each other's smiling faces and sharing stories and wisdom together. It's been too long. It's time to try and get things back to normal. I see some thumbs up in the sanctuary. I like this. I like being the one standing up here delivering good news. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it, is, it is really good to see more faces in sanctuary day. And again, Cheryl, I just love seeing your smiling face. I have missed seeing you across the room at our meetings at the university. But uh, I'm definitely going to try and gently arm twist you to come back again. Uh, because, uh, first of all, you have a captive audience to learn some songs. And uh, Karen might actually decide to bring a drum to choir practice in the future to help get things going. I think it would be delightful if uh, we had you come back again. So now... We'll move on to a lovely offering of music. Uh, on the screen right, right now are the ways you can share your gifts with the church. And uh, I'm not going to read it. Uh, you've seen this every Sunday. You know the routine. So right now I'm going to get out of the way and let uh, Katie Black, Karen L. Bennett, and Dan Somerville share a gift of music with us this morning as we contemplate our offering.
anyone would like to know uh, what they can do to help Hazel and Caitlin, you can see me after the service. Uh, Hazel provided me with a list of things that would be very helpful. Before we are asked and before a need is expressed, we dedicate the first portion of our wealth as a gift. Whatever portion that might be, trusting that our offering will further renewing and reconciling work which we are called to join. Let us worship God, the creator, with our offering. And now Cheryl is going to share with us again a Cree healing song and then a blessing. Thank you. The Cree Healing Song. For me, this was one of the first songs I ever learned walking on this red road. I carried my drum with me for five years here in Treaty 7, and I couldn't seem to pick up the different nation songs. I couldn't pick up the Blackfoot songs. I couldn't pick up the Diné songs. I couldn't pick up the Stoney songs. I couldn't pick up Lakota Sioux or Anishinaabe. I just couldn't, but I could keep a beat. Always good to keep in a beat. Five years I walked on this red road and I was finally invited to a Cree women's sweat lodge. And the elder saw me with my drum and she goes, Cheryl, play us a tune. And I said, I don't know any. She said, oh, well, that's disappointing. Okay, fine. But during the second round of that sweat lodge, something profound happened. And the elder started to sing this song. And I started to sing and drum this song all the way through from beginning right till the end. At the break, the, el the elder elbowed me. She said, I thought you didn't know any songs. And I said, I don't. I said, but this song, that song, that song knew me and came to me. And I've since found out many songs stories, prophecies, and teachings that we thought were lost to those who have crossed over through illness, through the effects of residential school, through the 60s scoop, and to those children that are now in care. There are more indigenous children in care now than there was during the whole residential school time. So we still have a lot of work to do. And we still need to work on healing, on healing ourselves, on healing our neighbors and helping them, on healing our communities and those who've suffered so much pain, so much hurt and so much loss. I invite you to, during the third round of this song, I will stop drumming, but I will continue singing. I invite you to put your hand on your belly button, to close your eyes and focus on your spirit, healing your spirit, your mind, your heart, your body. And pray for those in your life who need your prayers. We'll pray for Hazel and for Caitlin and for all those who are suffering and in need. And I'll bring the drum in for the last round and let that prayer go. Let that energy go. Let that love go out there to do its good work. This is the Cree healing song. And it indeed reflects the first drum beat we hear when we're in our mother's womb. The heartbeat that connects us all as two-leggeds. All my relations on this planet. Oh, hey, oh, hey, oh, hey, oh, oh, way high, way high, way high, oh, way high, way high, way high, oh, way high, way high, oh, oh, hey. Ah, hey, ah, hey, ah, hey. 
Wei hai, wei hai yo. Ah hey, ah hey, ah hey, ah ho. Wei hai, wei hai, wei hai yo. Wei hai, wei hai, wei hai yo. Wei hai, wei hai yo. Thank you, Creator, for blessings received. Thank you, Mother Earth, for the gifts of your bounty. Thank you to the gifts and the elders who have come before us to share their teachings with us. For our beautiful Creator, who has given us the most precious gift of all, the gift of life. Beloved Creator, we are small and weak. We need your strength, your wisdom, your love to guide us on this journey of life. Creator, we thank you for the precious and blessed and sacred gift of love. May we always choose love over fear when we have that choices to make. Beloved Creator, we thank you for blessings received each and every day. Creator. Let thy will be done. Hey, hey, hey. Thank you, Creator, for blessings received. Hi, hi. Go in peace.